We are all born with a hunger inside of us to chase our version of Goliath, but we are not all courageous enough to face it. Those of us who are bent on conquering it must return to it again and again, conquering the next Goliath that stands in our path, and in the process, chasing the legacy of those that have come before, and in return, leaving a legacy. Hi, my name is Destiny Finn, and I am the director and producer of Chasing Goliath. I got started in filmmaking when I was a kid, seven years old, had a dream on a whim. I want to become a filmmaker, Dad. That Christmas, he got me this chinky dinky camcorder, and that kind of was the start of it all. You know, after that, the rest is history. Age 13, I got involved in a broadcasting class at my high school. I was making recap videos like for camp and my like friends on the weekends. And honestly, for school projects, anytime I could make a video instead of like having to do a presentation and just present a video instead, I was doing that. Me and my friends, we were out there filming the weirdest videos for science class and whatnot to explain Newton's theory and law. All those videos were my projects. I guess I kind of worked on before Chasing Goliath. It was just funny videos, recap videos, YouTube videos, spoken word poetry, watching the YouTubers on how to do different ideas, transitions, you know? And then Music Bed came out and now we have TikTok and we have Instagram Reels. So like we've definitely in my lifetime of growing up seen a progression of video. Um, so that's kind of where I just started was just having fun making stupid videos with my friends Because if you don't love what you do, you're not gonna do it and I've always loved finding the fun in filmmaking um, But before chasing Goliath, I'd never actually worked on a documentary Chasing Goliath was my first true short-term like short-form documentary style video um, that I actually like went through the whole thing of having to work with like a whole team and whatnot kind of like hey This is over climbing rocks definitely had a lot of like mini projects But I never actually had I guess a true documentary project if that makes sense if I Could describe chasing Goliath in one word that word would be courage and I say that because like the video in and of itself like the whole thing about climbing the routes but also what goliath means is supposedly this giant that's unbeatable but it's actually quite vulnerable um and so everyone has their own version of goliath everyone has their own versions of fears that they face when they go out into the world that they have to choose to either ignore or to conquer you know and so for rock climbers every route they go on that's a new goliath for them to conquer you know a new route to conquer a new height to climb for me, Chasing Goliath was a test of my courage because like I said, it was the first documentary I ever made. Um, and it was shot all on my iPhone. And at the time I was feeling very inadequate that shooting on an iPhone could make an actual movie, you know, because like you watch all your, these YouTubers and they have like nice cameras. And at the time I was 18, fresh out of like high school, like two years back, like just living on my Jeep. Um, and so to like shoot a video just on my iPhone, cause that's all I had. I definitely felt inadequate. I definitely struggled with the thoughts of this is gonna turn out stupid, who's gonna wanna watch it? You know, like what if I disappoint all these people? So it was it was my test of courage of facing those fears and pushing through it anyways. Definitely Clint Eastwood. Um, love, love his directing style. I love his more kind of retro, kind of Western style movies that he tends to play in and also direct. And I also, that's probably one of my favorite things about him is he's kind of broke the dimension wall between you just have to be a director or you just have to be an actor. Um, you can be both. And for me growing up, like I said, I've always kind of worked on filming myself. You know, I've looked after Papa McKinnon and Jake Frew and these YouTubers that do, they film themselves. And so for Clint Eastwood to be like a professional director, but to also act in his movies was like really inspiring for me because I hope to do that one day. I also really like Wes Anderson. Um, he has very unique style. Like if you look at his set compared to other people's, it's always gonna be full of color, very weird, just like establishing shots and whatnot. Um, and I like that because it reminds you that if you have a unique creative idea and you believe in it, it's something worth watching. You know, because a lot of times, especially as a creator, especially like as a YouTuber, you kind of get this feeling that like, oh, what does the audience want to see? You know, and even like when you're a director, you have to film things in a way that the audience wants to see in a dramatic style, um, not like a logical style, which is how most humans kind of think when they think, why, why is she, she turning on the light switch? You know, like this is a horror movie. But the whole point is you went to see that movie to be scared. So the director is now going to film it in a dramatic style 
to make you have that jump scare not oh yeah she has a flashlight let's use it you know um so there's definitely that line of creating what you have a fire to create um, but also creating what the audience wants to see and so the healthy balance is creating the vision that you have in a way that the audience would want to watch it my ideal project would actually be to have a full-length feature like cinematic documentary um kind of like a richard jewel like clint eastwood he did a documentary style but it was a movie it was entertaining you know um and that's kind of the style i like doing and running with and so I would do a full length one. And I kind of already know, I think, what true story I'd want to go off of, but I'm not gonna share those little details because before this, I've never actually had a budget. It's all been out of pocket, you know, like my gas money to drive to the Red Rocks, my money to buy a plane ticket to get up to Alaska. Um, so I guess I did have a budget to buy the plane ticket, came out of pocket, but I didn't really have like a set budget. <laughs> first words that come to my head is a type A bohemian efficiency. Um, in my senior year of high school, I took a trade school at a college for um, digital media arts and that was my professor's biggest pet peeve with me is, why do you do it like this? Like this isn't how you're supposed to do it. And Cause I just, I did, I had a different way than by the book, than by what she wanted, than by how other kids would do it, but it worked. You know, people, they still understood what I was trying to communicate. We still got things done on schedule. I was getting things done ahead of schedule um, because I do, I have a very, ENTJ personality, like efficiency is my biggest like priority, but I also have that creative ADHD mindset where I'm like all over the place and constantly like, oh this, oh that. But when it comes to like filmmaking, I have like, I see all the moving parts and I can just run with it. So like, I don't forget like, oh, we need this, we need that. So I make sure everything's on schedule, people are working together, that things are running smoothly, that, you know, they have what they need and they have what they need. Um, so it's definitely unique. Um, but it worked. To ensure production is on schedule, it's that same exact thing, efficiency of communication. You know, whether it's a business relationship, romantic relationship, or friendship, communication is key. You're gonna need that. It's gonna make or break whatever it is you're doing. Um, and so to ensure production is on schedule, I do. I'm always big on communicating. Everyone's getting a text of, hey, make sure to be there. Usually I tell them to be there a half an hour before I actually want them to be there because not everybody shows up on time. So in order to prevent me from getting frustrated, I say, get here at seven if I want you there at 7.30. Because guess what? Everyone shows up by 7.25 and you're like, perfect, we're on schedule, ahead of schedule by five minutes. Um, but yeah, definitely communication is how I ensure my productions stay on schedule and stay, I guess, ahead of schedule. Because if people don't know and you don't communicate, people aren't mind readers, you know? So if you don't communicate with them, they they aren't gonna know, um, but yeah. I kind of already touched on this. It was the mental fears I was facing um, because it was, it was like, am I gonna have enough B-roll? Am I gonna even have a video like that people wanna watch? Is the story gonna be deep enough? Did I get the right part of the story? You know, like, oh, are the shots even gonna be that good? Like, is the iPhone gonna actually like be a good thing to film on? Um, so it was all those lies and fears and doubts and insecurities that I was facing, um, especially since I was so young in the game. Um, a lot of my mentors and a lot of my peers, like I've always been usually the youngest in a group. So to film Chasing Goliath, it kind of was like, I feel like I, I'm not old enough and not mature enough to film this. Um, and I just, I had, I had to quiet those voices and I just really had to trust my gut and run with it. And what's the worst that's gonna happen? Worst case scenario, I didn't have a document that came out of it. I just have a bunch of cool B-roll and a memories rock climbing and I make a recap video, which I did. Um, but you know, you just, you gotta not listen to the fears because to have courage, it means taking responsibility. You know, and fear isn't a bad emotion. It's definitely a core emotion, but it shows you that you're on a worthy path pursuing. Um, and I've noticed that with my life. Anytime I get fearful of something, it's usually because that thing that I want to go towards is really important to me. And so there is those fears of like, oh, but what if you fail? But what if you succeed, you know? So yeah, it was definitely the mental battles that came with Chasing Goliath. And then just honestly filming in general, we were filming like in Keyhole and on the Red Rocks. So you had to get the shots that you wanted before the sun hit the rocks because Nevada rocks get very hot. Um, and also the lighting would not have been the best of friends. 
definitely documentary work. I hope to continue to pursue documentary filmmaking um, wherever I go, you know, whether it's finding a surfer in Australia or finding somebody who lives on their boat in Thailand or a Zen teacher in Japan. I hope to just continue to find the stories. My motto has always been, everyone has a story. You just gotta find the story in their story that's inspirationally worth telling if that makes sense like find the meat of the story um, that makes that person so special and unique and so I, I just hope to continue to pursue those works i definitely have some blueprints that i'm working on for future documentaries right now um but those like i said are gonna stay up here until they're actually out in the world because it kind of takes the pressure off me and then people also don't take my ideas but yeah